direct them to the proof of an African genesis and be a portal through which they can access the inner emperor and the inner empress because it's the duty of every man and every woman to manifest God in flesh. So we honor the body, God, the Ori and the Ruha Kodesh. We say, Hete Shalom, Assalamu Alaikum, Ja bless call. This poem and all the rest are for the ancestors. We stand upon their shoulders. So rise, you African sons and daughters. Let me bust the steel files and fold uh, uh, uh. And we give thanks for everyone taking time this afternoon to join us here on Building Legacy, a broadcast that focuses on our ability to learn, teach, act, share, and build. I am one of the co-hosts, Senate Dr. Tunsera Davis Kahina and representing a multiplicity of organizations, orders, and much more. And we're also looking forward to being able to have shared with us our illustrious, majestic, powerful beyond measure, African Queen Mother Warrior, Sister Dr. Sandra Richards. <laughs> Ah, it is a blessing. It is a blessing and a privilege to be a child of Africa in this time and to be able to step into that identity without any hesitation. And of course, to join with you, my most majestic and divine high priestess, worthy of acknowledgement, wise one, African Queen Mother Warrior Senate, Dr. Chinzira. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> we have to lift each other up in this hostile climate where the crime that we commit is to be melanin rich and we are guilty. We have to lift each other up. Give thanks. <laughs> I know our guests are processing because sometimes that's going to seem a little bit over. And we do that to actually compensate and add balance to the restoration of our greatness and our humility at the same time in a space that really holds up the global African legacy experience, our indigeneity, our sovereignty. So when we talk Absolutely. about building legacy, we are actually speaking from a space of power and strength and not a space of want or cowering underneath. That's anyone. right. Yeah. So that's where part of that is coming from. As those of us that have been joining with us, and we want to extend our thanks for those that are joining us on Facebook Live, and just being able to offer any form of introduction. We're going to do something a little different this time because we'd like to give the bio piece first and then let each representative guest share their commentary to start our discourse. I am very honored to be able to introduce sister comrade, queen mother, Charlene Wilkinson, activist, mm -hmm. scholar, coming out of Guyana. And I'm very thankful to be able to share a, a thread of some of her background, some of the legacies that she has been so kind to share in a very revolutionary space. She teaches in academic literacies, has served as coordinator of the Guyanese Languages Unit at the University of Guyana, has been a teacher of language, literature, drama for most of her career with experience in the US as well as Jamaica and of course, Guyana. She's also worked as a journalist and as a director and script writer in theater. And some of her signatory work is around historic charter for language policy and language rights in the Creole speaking Caribbean. It's really important to know that what our most honorable sister queen mother comrade 
Charlene Wilkinson brings to the table is the importance of language, the importance of language education policies, the importance of teacher education around language and literacy. Again, making sure that this is integral to performing arts, cultural creatives, and, and essentially development of a very vibrant, very vibrant, I wanna say that twice, wow. Guyanese community creative arts movement. In regard to her activism, as we hear her share her skills, talents, and expertise and her ideological activism, and I wanna highlight that, not just the ideological theoretical piece, but the ideological activism Notice that we said sister, queen, mother, comrade. Yes, I, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. And I just am very thankful that, you know, in addition to her academic strengths and skills and expertise, she brings not only an academic perspective, not only an intellectual engagement, but pragmatic work that crosses beyond what people refer to as multiculturalism, which is quite limiting. So we'll say transcultural engagement. It is much more than multilingualism because it becomes translingual. So that we do not allow language to interfere with our experience, our sharing, our work, our storytelling and giving forth the most accurate narrative, the most historically accurate narrative, the most culturally appropriate an aware narrative through a multiplicity of languages and across disciplines. And with that, we'd like to just welcome and have our opening reflections from Sister Queen Mother, Comrade Charlene Wilkinson. Ah, ah, in the house. <laughs> Good, thanks. Is she there? Greetings, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, that was a beautiful introduction. And I, as I listen to you, I'm thinking every single child on in this Caribbean, in the African world, should hear that kind of, of presentation about themselves every single day. Mm -hmm. okay. And it is not to become egotistical and individualistic, but it is to understand how important they are, how loved they are, how appreciated they are. We do this through the entire two hours. So it, it grows on you. We, we're accustomed. <laughs> Some persons, it takes them a moment. It takes them like the first half hour of the production. <laughs> However, we do this whenever we speak, whenever we're live, wherever we're together. And we, we make it so that this can extend beyond some of our limiting spaces. Mm -hmm. I will ask my illustrious co host African Queen Mother Warrior Sister, Dr. Sandra, to share the bio piece on our illustrious guest. Thanks. Our Thanks. divine brother, King. It is my, it is my privilege to do so. Absolutely is my privilege to welcome to this conversation our most reverend brother, King Lasana M. Seku. And I ask if I am not pronouncing your name correctly, that you correct me because um, my, my upbringing has made my tongue lazy. So uh, language I'm still recovering in and from. Um, so our brother King Lasana and Siku is a writer, journalist and publisher. In 1980, our illustrious brother King founded the House of Nehesi Publishers when he was at the State University of New York. Then in 1984, the House of Nehesi Publishers relocated to Phyllisburg, St. Martin and has published over 150 writers. Let me just say that again. <laughs> it's like, woo, okay. When you're in the presence of greatness, you must pause for a moment and acknowledge it. We are in the presence of greatness. So this publishing house has published over 150 writers, including acclaimed authors, George Lanning, Amiri Baraka, 
Chiki Vis Visiaso. Am I saying that right? Okay. Nida Kuri, Sheikh Keen, Tishani Doshi, and Kamal Bradford. I mean, the House of Nehesi publishers are worthy of noting. And our illustrious brother, who is the founder, is the co-organizer of the annual St. Martin Book Fair. Our illustrious guest himself has written over 20 books of poetry, short stories, monologues, and essays. His own writings have been required reading at Caribbean, North and South American and European universities. He is the editor of the landmark National Symbols of St. Martin, a primer, and producer of, now let me just make sure I get this right, Fet, the first recording of traditional St. Martin festive music by Tammy and the Boys. Our brother King Seku has recited his poetry at literary festivals and delivered papers at conferences globally in the Caribbean, US, South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia. And this publishing house is a recipient of the World Tourism Day Award, UNESCO Prize for Mother Language, Culture Time, ACT Award, and the American Graphic Design Award. Now, the, it's abbreviated here as GDUSA, but uh, I think that it's important to really read out the accomplishments of those of us who have done the work and come to share their precious time with us. Seku's awards, Brother King's awards and honors include an International Writers' Workshop Visiting Fellow in China, James Michener Fellow in the States, Recognition for Literary Excellence in the Service of Caribbean Unity, Dominican Republic, and Knighthood Netherhood, Netherlands, and the CTO Award of Excellence. And he's a judge for the Casa de las Americas Literary Prize and the National Independence Festival of Creative Arts. Brother King Lasana M. Seku is an advocate for the independence of St. Martin, which is currently a colony of Netherlands and France. Well, we have to do something about that. And Hurricane Protocol is his newest book of poems. Can we give a divine, majestic welcome to our brother, King Lasana Seku? We are in the presence of greatness and we must celebrate ourselves. We're the okay. ones we're waiting for. That's right. That is right. That is right. That is right. So that's one of the reasons why when we do these pieces, Brother Sekou, please give us that opening word. Greetings and peace to all listening in. And it's an honor to be here with Dr. Richards, and Dr. Kahina. Um, it's an uh, honor to be in this space where some classic greetings are being showered. <laughs> You know, so that is good to see. It's um, I, I should point out two two points that um, in the introduction, um, rather than 150 writers, it's over 150 publications, and we have over 50 writers, um, including those that were mentioned. And it's key. What is key for us is to bring in. Um, while indeed we've been fortunate to have some of these world acclaimed uh, authors, the idea is also to bring in new writers new into writers. space, yes. you know, to, to, yes. to share them with the world, to share them with their specific nations and communities and beyond as it goes. And then the, the St. Martin Book Fair was founded by Suja Ref. So indeed, I am a co-founder of it with the brother who's a leading activist here in, in, in St. Martin. And in fact, I, I, I would throw out this, this, this point now to Dr. Kahina that maybe 
in one of the, the interviews of the Legacy Building that we invite Brother Suja to, to speak. Yes, because the, the, the legacy of the St. Martin Book Fair, as it adds to this region, as it adds to the nation of St. Martin relative to education, to literature conferences, and so forth, um, inspiring writers to go on, having writers meet publics and publics meeting writers, has been going on for 19 years. And, you know, and so perhaps for the 20th anniversary, which is next year, we can have Brother Suja on this program to give some ideas about what that work that's being done towards uh, this liberation journey that we've been on. And so believe me, that was in, it's in the making and it's usually his conflict in schedule. Like even today, he had another engagement at yes, noon yes, that yes. kind of crossed over in what we were doing. So I yeah. appreciate that. I don't know how he, he does it with the scheduling. You know, it's, that's that's a whole nother stuff. But right, you, 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 you've, been, you've been privy to some of that, Dr. Yes. Karina, because you've yes. visited and you've been a guest of the um, of the book fair and have participated in conferences and so on. And I'm very honored to be able to say yeah. I'm part of that. It's a powerful legacy and it's a fabulous work and the exchange is so organic. Again, that's yeah. why when we speak of building a legacy, that's what is another example of building legacy. You know, uh, the St. Martin Book Fair is an example. What the House of Nehesi publishers have continued to do and made available, that's another example you know what is being done by our illustrious sister queen mother comrade charlene in guyana in regard to integrating language on all levels that's another example and that's what myself and african queen mother warrior sister dr sandra are so focused on bringing to the table a lot of persons don't know what we're doing persons will hear you know and choose pieces here and there and if we were to let more people know in these networks that have been afforded to us, you know, in terms of technology and et cetera, it can go even further. And we'll start to stimulate more involvement, more engagement, more activism and more revolution. With that being said, Sister Dr. Sandra, shall we start our inquiry piece? Oh, we, we, we should, but can I first of all just acknowledge um, Brother King's um, addressing those errors uh, what I would say is, uh, we are you know, uh, the House of Nehesi has fifty authors strong now, but the other hundred are on their way. <laughs> we love it. Yeah, hundred yes. are on their in, way. In, in, indeed, and yes. this, net, this networking today, I'm sure, have engaged a few to to focus on what we're doing and to say, well, maybe we should submit a manuscript there or something. Yes, and, see what and you know, um, <laughs> you, when you speak of bringing new authors through. When we, when we speak of the work that we have done, we do so with acknowledgement, but also with humility, because we are doing what we're doing on the shoulders of those who have gone before. Indeed. And so we also want to create shoulders for those who are coming, because there is much work to be done. And that's why we are building legacy. And we are so very honored to have you both here, such accomplished and illustrious ones among us who give thanks, who give thanks. With that, we'd like to go into a little synopsis of just what building legacy is. And this is very, very, this is the ultra brief version. When we came together to establish this particular broadcast, it was with the intention that we could have persons that are already active in various activities, whether it was in interdisciplinary studies or transcultural media engagement or linguistics or publishing or jurisprudence, uh, athleticism, cultural creatives, science, technology, and all the other areas that are part of building blocks of nations, building blocks of civilization. And essentially, the short version, Building Legacy is an interdisciplinary and trans cultural media broadcast, sharing conversations, living versations, living conversations, actions, and solution focused perspectives on global affairs and movements in the Caribbean, Africa, Eurasia, the Americas, globally. Most of our broadcasts that are the second and fourth Saturday of each month allow for us to have time 
to prepare and have our guests share a snippet because we know in a couple of hours we couldn't possibly envelope the magnitude and the greatness and the depth of all the work that's being done, but to at least provide our listeners, our viewers with a, a, a synergy of some of the work that's being done, things that are very current, as well as things that have given the foundational cornerstones for what your initiatives, organization, your research, publications, et cetera, bring to the table. And that's essentially where our inquiry comes. That's essentially, so it's not just the who you are, it's the what you do, how we can assist. Are there ways for persons to link with you and your initiatives or your organizational entities to be a part of that? And how can we strengthen the support in terms of building legacy so that 50 years from now, 100 years from now, what we have established is firm and can be built upon. And that's the nature of this particular broadcast and how we engage with one another, ideally. And I appreciate, and I will share it publicly, that our most illustrious guest, King, Brother Lasana, delicately reminded some of us on the importance of publishing. I'll leave that there for now. Mm -hmm. So sister, queen, mother, comrade, Charlene, we'd like for you to just share with us some of the work that you've been involved in and just give us a opening, a continuation, if you will, of some of the things you'd like to highlight, which you have shared thus far are going to be centered around the importance of language as I've just shared. And it's also for us to explore what your interests are in terms of the legacy of language, the power of the written word for developing self-concept and the responsibility of, I'll say, as you said, elected leaders, I'll just add selected, appointed, because there's a lot in that term leaders. And so let's welcome again, sister, queen, mother, comrade, Charlene Wilkinson. Yes, Dr. Chen, thank you again. Um, where to begin? I have a few slides I can show. Okay. And I would like to show actually, and I'd like to say that what we're currently involved in now in the Guyanese Languages Unit, and your eyebrows might raise a bit, but we are translating the COVID-19 advisories of the Ministry of Health into all the indigenous languages of Guyana. And that is to say, whenever we get them from the Ministry of Health. But it has more far reaching implications than simply hoping that people turn their radios on and listen to these advisories. It involves communities, it involves the translators in communities that have previously been ignored uh, in terms of their linguistic wealth. Uh, it also broadcasts these languages as never before across the nation. So I would say that beyond COVID-19, what this initiative has done is let the Guyanese people be aware because on the coastland, many, many Guyanese, the great majority of Guyanese are still very, very unaware that there are people in their very nation that speak radically different languages from themselves. Um, so we have that initiative going on. And the third value of that initiative is that they're writing the translations down as well. So we don't only have voice, we have text. With all the attending issues about which writing system to use, how do you learn to write this thing? And so what I want to do now is to Bring, bring us now to the, re the relevance of writing and publishing and the, the importance and value of our own mother languages. Uh, let, let me begin with showing you a slide, if I may, if you allow me to share a screen. Oh, I am allowed. Yes. Can you see this screen? Yes. I want to put it on slideshow so you're not seeing the side panel, but you're seeing this 
current slide. Right. Go from the yeah, go from the current slide. There we go. So what we have now in this British ex colony, sometimes I don't even want to call it British ex colony. It's now an American current colony. But let us look at the um, let me see if this this slide thing will work. Right now, this is what we have. We have English only curricula. And in the Dutch Caribbean, you could imagine you have Dutch only. Um, in the Spanish, you might have Spanish only. In the French, you have French only. With a complete ignoring of the Creoles of the Caribbean and the indigenous languages. In, in each uh, territory, there's a little more or a little less emphasis or validation. But generally in our schools, the European language is the language, okay? Is the one we're speaking now. So in reality, what you have is suppression, suppression of native Guyanese languages. And when, you know, you can take out Guyanese and put whichever territory you're from. The children's mother languages are ignored. Their real inner voices are ignored and they're not allowed to develop into full school languages. And so you, you end up with a marginalization of speakers of Guyanese languages in their own country. And you have poor expectations. Now you could see that what happens in number five is that becomes a sociological reality, not only a linguistic reality. When you know certain classes or groups of children go to school, you don't expect much. And then when one excels, you put their names and faces in the papers and they become that one only or, or part of a minority that get pushed up. Um, and you have that kind of thing as one African speaker I saw recently on WhatsApp saying that musical chairs thing that we learn when we are children. The music plays and you push one child off, then you push another and there's only one winning. But if you flip that over and you do it from an African-centered perspective, you include all the children. And when the music stops and you remove the chairs, everybody has to share that chair. So I'm trying to say the, the current English only European Eurocentric school system is producing these individualists who excel in the colonial language and then leave the community. Psychically, they may not leave physically, but they leave psychically. And they even stop using their mother language. Now the ideal, even the United Nations expects this. Uh, I guess I can come out of this slide. Even the United Nations now is calling for what they call mother tongue based multilingual education, mother tongue based. So we we really need we needing to move to a more realistic a school system that is more really based in the realities of community where people are multi multilingual. And Dr. Chen, you, you mentioned this that you yourself grew up in a multilingual experience. The, the next thing is the, well, related to that is the, what, what language does when we sit in school and we do things that we call language, uh, language arts. And when you teach a child to write their language, right? Sure. You learn to write, to carry on the business of the world. But the other end of writing is what our, oh, Dr. Lasan is talking about, publishing for self-expression and preservation and perpetuation of self and culture. Okay, now how can you possibly teach children that in a language that is not their own? that they learn secondarily, second-handedly, and, and learn poorly because of suppression of their mother languages. 
So this is where I'm coming from. This is where my activism is coming from and why I keep, you know, why I keep beating administration, education administration, university administration on the head. When are we going to have proper people-centered language policy? So this is where I'm coming from. Over to you. I'm excited. <laughs> it is. Oh, it is very exciting. I'm excited. You know, if anyone has been following these building legacy um, broadcasts, they will know that I become excited and I have to turn to my illustrious um, co host, African Queen Mother Warrior Senate Dr. Chenzira and ask her to please make sure I'm moderated in my excitement, please, because as I'm listening to Queen Mother Comrade Charlene Wilkinson, uh, I am being triggered. I am being triggered hugely. Um, uh, Senate Doctor, you may uh, want to tell our guests and our listeners and our viewers what it is I always say about language. English is not my first language. That is my cry. That is my cry. And just listening to Queen Mother and give thanks, um, illustrious co-host and Dr. Um, Chenzira. As I listen to Queen Mother, comrade, I am so inspired. I'm so inspired having heard that you're not simply an academic, but you're also an activist like the lived experience, uh, what will happen to us? What would happen to us if we did not move away from just the theory of it and make it real? So when I'm listening and I, I, I started to write things down, um, you know, that language suppression, uh, that oppression, it's playing itself out. So we don't have the confidence. So it's not the expectations as your diagram shows. But what does that mean then for us in the world, in a global environment? How can we function at the level we need to if we have this psychological uh, and also this, this arrested tongue, which I confess to having, I have an arrested tongue. Um, maybe- All of us, all of us. Yes, and when Brother King um, starts to perhaps uh, start to introduce something to this conversation, uh, something can be said about what happens when you do try to write things down in anything other than English, what that further does to our, our spirit and our psyche and our, uh, and our confidence in the world. If we legitimize our mother tongue, but then when we try to write something down, because we, there's an expectation we will publish, then we get the pushback from the, from the publisher. I am very honored and humbled to hear of your work. This is very, very exciting. I'd like, um, to, put a, I'd like to put up an image. I got it from the internet, but I put the link where I got it from. I want to put up this image and ask you what you think. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Look at it. Uh, don't even read. Just look at the image. That's the sleeve. Right. Now, what 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 the the uh, Western press or the traditional media would have us believe is that our ancestors were, you know, were subjugated, were were um, what, what, I'm looking for a word, help me with a word. Um, docile? Docile, even when they were rebelli rebelling, yeah. that they lost, they lost. But what we didn't lose with language because we created a new language. Mm -hmm. Was it Grace Nichols who said, um, oh my, I don't wanna mis mis misquote her. I have traveled an ocean. I have lost my tongue from the root of the old one, a new one 
has come, something like that. And it, it's not only one language, it's the Caribbean Creoles everywhere. And, and here again, we need to recognize what you're saying, sis, is the English language came to Guyana and the Caribbean with the English colonies. It was never, the English language was never spoken natively by the masses of Africans or the indigenous people. But they were it was taught in the school system set up by the colonists. So it cannot be said to be a native language in the same way that Creoles and the indigenous language are native. Some of us are near native speakers of English. And when we, if we are honest with ourselves, we must recognize that what that signals is that we became connected to that class of people who became to a large extent the elite and the oppressors who looked like the masses, but they became part of a class that, that you know, re behaved in turn like the European colonists. And I don't want to get into any unpleasantness today, but that, <laughs> that <do>. class, <laughs> That class, and I, I will admit, I am from it, and I had to commit class suicide to do my work. Oh my goodness! But that oh class, goodness. but that class taught us to separate ourselves. Uh, Hillary Beckles does have a paper where he speaks of that. That you know, some of us learned the master's language and used it to separate ourselves from the masses of people. And you know, it is an embarrassing thing to hear people who call themselves Pan-Africanists reject the validity of the Caribbean Creoles mm. as valid languages. It is a reality. Um, mm. I, you know, it's one of the things that I like to re remind us. And then you have this very uncomfortable shifting of the feet in some fora when you're speaking. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> we are here to dis we are here to disrupt the algorithm. We are here to to create legacy. We are here to speak out against that which has been done to us, and we have felt it too polite to say anything. The idea of class suicide reminds me, um, I was told years ago that I am committing professional suicide by speaking in the way I speak about what has happened to us. Something wow. has happened to us and we are trying to recover from it. We are working to recover from it. Um, at, this, at this point, I don't know if uh, we want to bring Brother King in, but you know, when, you, when you're trying to recover from something, and you're trying to write it down or have it broadcast or publish it, and you're being told that the way you speak is unacceptable. Um, that in itself is another oppression. It is another attack on the self. I, I recently uh, traveled to a, a, a land and um, I spoke to some students and one of the things that came out of the discussion that stayed with me is the question that one of the students asked about dreaming in their mother tongue. They, they, oh. they, 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 are, they are so affected that dreaming in their mother tongue oh. is causing them conflict because they are not to speak in this way to get on professionally. So here you have this inner turmoil. And so if we don't dream in our mother tongue, if when we get furious and passionate, we want to speak in our mother tongue, but we have this conflict, then what is to become of us? Uh, how are we to create a vision if our spirit is not allowed to speak in its native form? Maybe Brother King, you have some contribution to make in terms of the dilemma that those of us who are holding on to our, our essence are faced with when we come to a publishing house and we say, we have things to say. And you say, not you, but it is said. 
you may be able to say these things, but you can't say it in the yeah. form of saying it. But before okay. brother comes in, let me let me before I forget because I tend to forget. Nowadays, to my mind, it is more important for us to say things to each other rather than to the world. It is important. We've been speaking out to the world for more than two, three hundred years, but we are missing those intimate things within family, between communities, across gender, you know, and this is where the publisher comes in. So over to you, brother. Before you, before you come in, Brother King, um, Queen Mother, Conrad, is it not possible to do both simultaneously? Maybe don't answer. Maybe don't answer. Of no, of course, but I don't think the others is being, one is not being done enough to my mind. That's my okay. position. All right. Brother King, what are we to do? <laughs> well, we are doing, and it, it's there's not much left for me to say um, other than what's been said already. Language certainly is one of the most embattled areas that we've been in on this liberation journey. Um, and indeed, uh, I think when we can, when we can engage in publishing, when we can, you mentioned if someone comes to the publisher and they have a story, what do I tell them? Well, I will tell them, tell it, let's hear it, you know, let, let's hear what this story is about and, and how can, and how can as a small indie press of House of Nehesi publishers, how can we help you to get that story out? And indeed, the sisters correct um, about, you know, talking to each other and about each other and in a critical way well-researched background and so forth and so you would find some of the books that we've done you know engage that so for example you will have a a, a, a pioneer series like this uh, that would speak to those who we call non-traditional nation builders so these were people in the community coming out of the early part of the last century for example who you know engaged in profession became very popular within their community um, may never have been in any newspaper or so on but became very popular and very skilled, but they were not professions that your parents would have told you to study for. So there's a series of, 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 of booklets that speak to that, or relative to articulating or, or, or studying or expressing in ways that, and in a language that's accessible to, to, to the range of people um, about our languages, um, both the nation tongue specific to a particular territory or country or within our region. And so, for example, then we will, we will have a book published like Dr. Rhoda Arundel's, who's a linguist here, called Language, Culture and Identity in St. Martin. And so in there, there's this package, there is this discussion, there's this embattled feel, but there's also approaches towards success, towards, towards what have already succeeded. We spoke earlier about being on the shoulders of, of folks who've come before us, who've carried us this far. And then now we're setting up these, these pillars or these foundations or these platforms on which to launch into our future. And so a book like that would do that. Relative to language, again, in publishing, our newest title is from our educator, in fact, um, um, uh, literary um, uh, professor from the Dominican Republic, um, Professor Rafael Nino Feliz. And it's a collection of poems where he is discussing in his poetry his journeys throughout the region. It's, so indeed, it is a very Pan-Africanist, uh, a Pan-Caribbean um, um, narrative story, journey line, but it's steep within the African cultures and the African identities from which we are emanating. So it's called um, Africa in My Skin, and it's in three languages. It's in the three um, languages. And I would even, I, I would argue that the rhythm in which he writes it is, yes, it's these, it's the French, the English, and the, and the Spanish, but the rhythm is within that African syntax um, that, that, we, that we speak. Even as we speak here, we are using that syntax, even that then we have to use the colonial languages and, and, and not always having access to um, our, our various um, Caribbean languages, languages that we made in this region. So here's a, here's a new title, it came out a few weeks ago. It was launched at the St. Martin Book Fair on this month, on June 5th. So these are areas, these are, are, are products, if you will. These are books, these are, these are capsules, these are platforms, these are ways and means in which we are trying to to, to, to work within our communities, speak to each other, um, speak to each other around the world, within our region, about what we are doing. And this constant sharing and networking is part of this liberation journey, which by the way, we have always been doing. Um, Garvey's uh, movement didn't just take place uh, in Harlem. 
or in Jamaica or in London or in Costa Rica. It, it was international because it networked, it reached out. Um, our musics in various forms do that. Our literature is engaging that more than before, coming out of the period of the 50s, the 1950s and so forth. Um, and, and that's our, our literature is across the language zones of our region. You know, we are seeing, for example, more and more of our writers not only writing or not writing only in exile, but they're coming out of the region. They're, they're, they're writing in the region. They're being published in the region or they, they may be published further afield, but they are living in the region or they're constantly in contact with the region. All of these are developments in, that, that, that allows for our narratives, for our stories, for our engagements um, to, be, to be more known to ourselves, if I can use a term from, from Garcia Marquez, about um, uh, colonialism, imperialism, slavery, those systems have made us more unknown and, and, and solitary. But our liberation engagement, our forms of, of engaging these, these struggles across the, the field, science, the arts, you know, you know commerce, English commerce, and, and, small commerce and, and you know, pooling re resources together to, 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 to develop medium size and large businesses. All of that makes us more known and solidary relative to, to, to each other and to, to our story and our narratives. And the book is, a, is, a, is a, in all its form, by the way. So it's not just the book in the print, but if we engage the technologies, the different medias, whether it's the ebook, whether it's the print, um, whether it's the audio book, um, um, there, there are various forms in which, and there are forms yet to be invented, forms that we will invent as Black peoples, as African peoples, to tell, to tell our story, they, that have yet to come. All of that is part of this, of this, um, of this, this, this symbol, this product thing that we call the book. And so that's part of what I'm involved in. And so indeed, much of what the sister um, from UG, uh, from Guyana, mentioned relative to language and the book, we, we are engaged in. We are engaged in it because others have been part of it part of it and we are adding to this to, to this struggle and indeed it's a kind of a, na a natural um, link and a natural network to what the sister is doing it's part of the milieu if you will to what the sister mentioned they're doing with the with the various nation languages of Guyana I'm fascinated to hear that the, the COVID um, uh, messages are in, in in these in the various languages it's fantastic and not only the audio but the written text I'm, I'm very disgusting about the text I I believe in the text I think you have to put it down you know we can talk but um and and, and that's part of, of the story as well but we also need that that written form that's also accessible um and so uh, people can can take, read it in the pleasure of their home and their school and their businesses on, on various journeys and 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 like walter rodney's writings i remember one professor telling me so well you know people like walter rodney or hemingway for that matter the way they wrote we, we see them as these giants but the way they wrote and the language they use somebody with a third grade level education could understand them you know, so even as we as we strive to be able to tell our story, um, we, we have to be cognizant that there are ways in which to tell it too, and there are ways in which to publish it as well, that should make it um, more accessible and that could make it more accessible. And this is a good thing to the various audiences and publics that are out there. This is, this is a very, very exciting. I, I see us as cultural warriors. I see us as, so when I hear, you know, um, our Queen Mother comrade being described as an activist, you know, years ago, to be an activist was something that, you know, you, you really don't want to mix with those kind of people. And it seems to me that if you're not an activist, that you're something other than active. And that would be very unfortunate, given the importance of what is happening, we are actually stepping into our uh, indigenous, our core being, and we are legitimizing our presence, and we are legitimizing our flavor, our rhythm, how we move through the world. Um, it, my ears pricked up when, when you spoke about the different forms, Brother King, of um, taking the word that must be written down, it must be documented, uh, a question for me is, uh, in what form? I mean, if, you, if, if you're not adhering to the strict English protocol, then what, you know, the, the writer gets beaten up and the writer becomes withdrawn and loses their confidence because they are not hitting the standard. 
unless they with, they are with a, a publishing house that gets it. But you, you also spoke about the audio book and the other forms not yet invented. And that made me excited because, you know, I am affiliated with the university, uh, with several actually. And one of the things you hear repeatedly is that people don't read, people don't read, people don't read. People do read. <laughs> You read, but they're also engaged in different forms of knowledge gathering and information interaction. And yeah. it comes in certain bites and it comes with certain uh, maybe rhythmic undertones. And I mean, you spoke about the um, African syntax, and, you know, the rhythm that we have. Uh, many of our young people uh, young people who now become the adults of these young people do not know what we're talking about because they've, they've attended a Eurocentric school and the Eurocentric school does not legitimize, celebrate or anything the African experience, the lived experience. And even in this, in, in this, in this gathering, um, as Queen Mother would have said, you know, she doesn't want any unpleasantness. I, 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 I promote unpleasantness. <laughs> I think myself and, and our illustrious co-host, Senate Dr. Chenzira, we are breaking free of the shackles of what pleasantness is supposed to be and what politeness is supposed to be because if we don't, we allow the murderers to keep being called traders. You know, we were, it was a transatlantic trade. It was murder <laughs> and it was violent and it was a breaching. Mm -hmm. and raping mm -hmm. of a people. It was a, a, an attempt to annihilate and exterminate the language. You're not allowed to speak like that. You're not allowed to, to move like that. You're not allowed to express yourself because that's not acceptable. I'm not sure that I want to be pleasant and acceptable if that's what it means. If I can't dream and, and, and be passionate in my mother tongue, I can't write, then what? Send it, doctor, please. <laughs> I appreciate how we're not bringing any delay to what's being shared because every single one of us are offering truth to power. And this is part of that interdisciplinary transculturalism that restores truth, justice, order, reciprocity, balance, divine righteousness and harmony. It took all of that to say the principles of Ma'at, but that's what we're doing is to be able to offer that layer in this context without there being, you know, uh, an overt amount to sanitizing what we're saying or being apologetic for the manner in which it's coming and just sharing those truths. And again, they're raw, but notice we all have proper, como se dice eso? A brazi? Right. We know how to say these things. Bring so, <laughs> yeah, bring up. There we go. You know, to, to say these things so that persons can understand the value of language, the value of that transculturalism and that fluidity that comes with language, and to spread that into, and I'm very thankful that our illustrious King Brother Lasana shared that that was something that always made House of Nehesi publishers stand out in the region. The mm -hmm. initial linkage of multiple languages in their publications. That is essentially something that other publishing houses tend not to touch too much. You know, when you are willing to do French, Spanish, English, incorporate that copiamental for those authors that that are willing to present that as well as Dutch and knowing that many of his own works which he has not said yet are translated into many of uh, dozens of other languages I think it's really important do not make me quote the details brother Lasana because you know go I ahead, go ahead go ahead <laughs> go ahead <laughs> Bring it up, bring it up. I think it's important, you know, when you have persons translating your work across into Eurasia, you know, throughout uh, South America, I think it's important that persons recognize that there's not only an attempt, but that's part of the legacy that's already been built right. to do that. 
And this is just an opportunity for us to let persons know this is taking place and we're willing, prepared, qualified, credentialed, what, and all of that to do so. And this is what we're looking for from those that are viewing, those that are listening. Viewing and listening can be seen as very passive. It's what you're going to do after you view and listen and actually support these particular building legacy efforts, these building legacy initiatives, these building legacy sustainably engaged act actions. What are you going to do? Make sure if you don't know where the website, because you know, I always tell persons up front, we should be looking at a variety of websites. Why? Because sometimes we overlook the importance of what some of our sisters and brothers are doing in their respect, you know, we, and we get caught. We get caught in that moment of, well, I'm not familiar and I'm not sure and I'm not, I'm not clear. And I said, no, it's very important that persons get an idea and a full level of understanding of the types of publications, the type of work that's being done. So just very quickly before we move ahead and forward, I just encourage persons to, and, and I know that there's a lot more information. Most persons are using their platforms inside of Facebook, but it's important to just houseofnehesipublish.com. There you can find out what they've been involved in, the thrust of Caribbean Literature Day every July 12th, and some of the publications, the types of celebrations, what is being encouraged to really push this envelope into fullness. This is not a new initiative. They've been at this a while, a while. And it's important that persons show that support. You can see that there's a very extensive area in regards to the themes around culture, entertainment, history and education, literature and fiction, mind and body, politics, religion, travel, tourism, libros en espanol. Just notice that we, francais, just so that we get the full effect. And then there's the connection to art and cultural creators that are integrated and of course music and then DVDs. And I would be remiss if I did not, you know, I'm downloading a couple of things that were shared off air and persons are also sharing those comments inside of our, our Facebook network to just ask, because you know they're going to ask illustrious King Brother Lasana for a poetic reading. So just prepare yourself between now and the next hour. We're just putting that out there. I know I can go to videos, but you're here and <laughs> request I, I wonder if I could remind us of a humble village legacy. There we go. I mean, in the old days, in the old days, they used, because of the colonial education, only a few people in a particular village might be able to read English, to read, because of course everything was English um, and still is to a large extent. And the tradition would be, which remind, I, I thought of this when he was talking about, uh, Lasana was talking about alternative new technologies for reading. They would buy the newspaper and they would sit under a tree and the village people would gather around and listen to that person read. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nowadays, as, as Dr. Sandra was saying, they're criticizing our young people for not reading. This whole thing about holding a book and sitting by yourself reading is not a natural thing. I think silent reading was invented, if I'm not wrong. Silent reading, it was said, was invented in the monasteries when the monks did not want to disturb their fellow monks. They would turn all the lights on. They would have a little light privately reading to themselves. This act of us sitting privately with a book really takes us away again from the notion of community. We have to keep remembering that when we write, it is for community. Uh, was it um, the author of 2000 Seasons, Aikri Arma? He says it so beautifully. He says in the West, the hero is one single person that goes out on a limb and this has challenges and then is um, respected by the community after coming back with uh, having overcome. But why couldn't we also write a book where the whole community is a hero? 
you understand the notion of that individualist Ubuntu. Is, a, is a western <laughs> creation right right i mean i'm saying it very clumsily here but yeah. the reading itself we have to remember that reading can be communal and we have to recreate those kinds of technologies where it is something shared. You know what? I, I just, I love this idea. And this is really what Building Legacy is, is about. What we are doing is we are remembering what we used to do and we're bringing it forward because we had an interruption. We had a Eurocentric injection that interrupted. And so we stopped doing the communal things. So we, our axiology is each other, is community. And actually, even in this period that we are existing through, there is this notion that we should socially distance. It's not socially distance that they're talking about. It should be physical distancing, if anything. When you start speaking about social distancing, you're speaking about destroying people and destroying culture. And so I love the idea, Queen Mother, of comment that we should, we should really embrace what Brother King is saying, and we should be bringing the book into a communal interaction. That's what we should be doing. So yes, yeah. Senator Doctor, we should be listening to our illustrious guests speak to us, bring alive the words and the rhythm and the stories. Let us do it. Let us not talk yeah. about, let us do it. Let us do it. Here we are. And and I you know I do think the doing is 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 engaged and and we are doing against significant odds and mm -hmm. and in a very short period of time we haven't been out of this mafia for two hundred years while we were in it for over three hundred years and and even in while in it there there are there are interactive and there are there are features yet to be brought out to give that sense of strength and manhood and womanhood and pride and so on so for example during the whole evil uh, enslavement period. You had communities in, 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 in Venezuela and Colombia and Haiti and Santo Domingo, the Maroon communities. You, you had Maroon communities that by the time slavery ended were over a hundred years old. So you're talking, about, you're talking about hundreds of people as opposed to the millions that were enslaved. You're talking about hundreds and thousands of people who were in this part of the world for a good hundred years or more and no way hit their back yet because they were in free communities. They were in Esmeralda, they were in, in Palmeiras, they were, you know, they, they were in different parts. They were in small maroon communities or maroon nations. You know, the Cubans have a good stratification of, of the different maroon systems, the Palinque and so on, the Kilimbo and so forth. But I'm saying, so we are learning more and more about this now. And here we are out of it. And you have to, to still, and I'm not being trying to be the, 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 the forever optimist here, but you have to look at within the last 200 years, how far we've come as a people, when you do analyze it as a people, because a lot of the, what is going on is going on within territories, within um, countries, within communities, you know, but when we look at a whole Pan-African picture, we look, when we look at a whole picture that we can call Pan-African, and we look at the movements that, that tend to heave us forward that we can call Pan-African is like the Negritude movements or the, or the Garvey movement or the Panthers or, you know, the, the independence movements in, in the 60s, the late 50s and the 60s and so forth. When we, those movements stand out because it, they, are, they are on the world stage and we see them. But every day in communities, there are people doing things. There are families sending their children to school. There are, they are, they are, they are children graduating from high school in this Caribbean of ours. And it's the first time that family ever had someone graduated from school since the end of, 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 of the 1830s um, and 1840s end of slavery. This, this is right here in our Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So we are still engaged in this, 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 this work. Everything we can do, including communications like this, talks like this, our media that the sister Chenzira uh, mentioned that folks should go and, you know, you have to educate yourself as well. Go and look for these websites, go and, and find these books. And you hear an event going on, try to go. The organ organizers also have a, a, a role to play, a significant role to play to make the people feel that they can come. You know, the, the massive crowds that we get at the St. Martin um, book, book Fair and the, and, and, the, and the book launches is, is almost impossible. When I tell people, you don't get those kind of crowds, not even in a cosmopolitan New York City, they look at me like I'm crazy. You know, but those crowds we get is because of how we started the proverbial everybody from the, from the bartender 
to the maid at the hotel, no, to the no, clerk no, in the no, store, no. to the bank no. executive, got an invitation with their name on it. Come, we have a book, you're coming. It's, it's, the story is about you. And as Lamin correctly pointed out, when a man starts to feel that that story is about him, mm -hmm. his relationship to that book is going to be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be an isolationist or atomized relationship. It's going to be, hey, that story is about me. In that story, I'm everything. I'm not just the clown, the buffoon, the prostitute, the so on, like Hollywood and other and other literatures have us, but I'm everything. I'm, I'm multidimensional. I am strong. I am I am I can be cowardly, I can run, I can face challenges, I can be beautiful, I can, you know, whatever the range of the human experience. Yes. When that person begins to feel that, not just know, but also feel, you know, it's like when they say, you know, people will remember, people will remember how you made them feel as opposed to what you told them or, or what you did, you know. Yeah. When they can feel that like, that story is about me. You know, people are going to relate differently uh, to it. So we've seen that experience. And when we talk, um, Sujar Ref in particular, when he talks with other book fair um, that, that are coming up, you know, some of the other book fair organizers contact us and say, well, how do you do this? How is this possible? But we make them feel, because we know that every relationship with the book, correctly as the, 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 the sister Charlene noted, with the book and with language, we know that coming off, not just in the slavery, enslavement period, but coming off of enslavement, a lot of the people that then became, that had a relationship with this book also denied us entry into it. You know, it was like, you know, know your place, go through the back door, you can't come in here, you can't come in here. You know, where are you going? You know, well, but in our, in our book, and I'm just using the book parties as an example, you know, in our book parties, the proverbial, everybody comes there. We, we've, had, we've had store owners or hotel owners and their secretary or maid meet at the book party dressed and this is the first time they've seen each other dressed at an event outside of the workspace exactly. you, know, you see Wonderful. so those type of when you build those type of relationship you are <laughs> indeed building community um, yes that community is based on a, a kind of a, a, a pan-african reality that yes. we've always carried with us um the, the oh, images yeah. pointed out sure. about the language we yeah. you know these languages that we we it wasn't just the interruption but what we engaged to survive and to live and to be humans often was based on the, the, what we brought over because that's what we had, that's what we need, that's what we know. You know, I, I always make, this is my last point on languages. I always make a joke, but I'm no lang linguist, but I always make a, a joke with, with my sister, Dr. Rhoda Arundel, who's, who's a serious linguist. And I point out how, when you hear folks speak Haitian or Jamaican or Papiamento or any of the Creoles of the Eastern Caribbean, you rarely, if ever, hear them say things like, um, 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 they're not searching for words. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, <laughs> wow. Wow. <You> know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. You hear them wow. speak, you know, <laughs> Haitian or, or Papiamento or Jamaican wow. or Dominican yeah. or the Samaritan yeah. language. Oh, it is the sweetest thing. Yeah. You know, it's a song. I love it. Because it's theirs. I love it. You know, and, and the yeah. last point relative to history and language and book and so on, I think it was Sister Maureen um, um, Lewis, I believe is her last name. She said to me once at, at UVI, there was a, a conference festival. I mentioned to her how, you know, in St. Martin, there are a number of folks from Haiti um, and Haitian heritage. And, and I always mentioned that. I say, you know, even, you know, average folks, doesn't matter their walk of life. You know, when you talk about certain, the basic elements, because you know, the struggles there as well. When you talk about the basic elements about the Haitian revolution, you know, they can come back. They have an idea. What, and you know what she said to me? She said, of course, because they made it. That's right. They know about that history because they made that history. That's right. That's that history, right. that history wow. and that language, yet, which is yet going through struggles in Haiti to be taught yeah. from, a, from, a, from a true Haitian perspective as yeah. opposed to a, a, a Franco-oriented type um, bias type. Wow. Perspective. So, so these are so so we are engaging. What yeah. we are doing here, we yeah. are giving voice and wings and and form and body um, to to this organic thing that we have always been living, and and we are strengthening it. We are moving forward, and we've been doing it within a period of of, of two hundred years, um, embattled. Well, you know the, 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 the knee, on, jo the knee on George break. Floyd's neck. The knee on George Floyd's neck is is the knee that has been on all of our necks. Wow. You know. Brother King, you are you are quite right. Let us do that. Let us do that tradition now. Let us do it now. Queen Mother, Conrad, I think you wanted to read something. I think Brother King, you were given notice by our honorable <laughs> African Queen Mother, Warrior Senate Doctor. 
you will be bringing your work. I understand you have you have some things that you are keeping there. So let us hear from Queen Mother, um, Warrior Comrade Charlene Wilkinson. Are you ready to bring that to this gathering here? Let us do the thing. We I am on. really. I'm just really ready to say, Brother Lazana, where have you been all my life? <laughs> Love we, that. We, we, we are there. We are in each other's, you know, milieu. And, and I think we, 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 and we, what you call, what you apologetically <laughs> call your optimism is just healing. Your, yeah. It's just healing statements of what is real. Nice. Turning nice. us back, slapping me in the face, saying, yes, don't despair. This has been happening. This is happening. Yes. I Indeed, do not despair. Do not despair. I, we, I we, give we are moving thanks. forward. And even for our youth, when we look at them sometimes and we and we can stress, there are areas to stress on, but there's also significant areas for rejoicing, you know, in, in, including not only including in material that they will bring in from before and so forth, but also in what they are making to add to this liberation journey, just as how we have made things to add to what we met. You know, and so yeah, so so it, it is, and it, we are not in a vacuum. We are we are not we are not without significant odds, you know. Um, but but we must press on and we must continue doing doing. Yeah, doing I, I would progress. love to see um, the House of Nehisi talk about doing workshops in the writing systems. Yes, we 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 we've done that. Um, in fact, the the Saint Martin Book Fair came out of such a workshop. We had a six month writing course out of which we also produced uh, 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 an anthology edited by Dr. Rhoda Arundel. And so, so and, and we at the book fair, we do have these workshops. The, at the anniversary of the Independence Day in, um, in, in Barbados a year or two back, I was invited to give workshops on publishing on the, the formats of publishing or the category of publishing that we engage at House of Nancy Publishers um, so that our stories keep coming out. And, yeah, but and let me add, yeah. uh, let me add writing systems in the languages. In other yes. words, yeah. many Jamaicans speak Jamaican, but they can't write Jamaican. Indeed. Because indeed. of the school thing. Right, and, and that too is what, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'd love to make that link. I will be sharing your website on our Guyanese languages website. Thank you. Appreciate that. Without and, your permission. Yeah. Yes, please. I appreciate that. <laughs> and and the language, um, indeed, the, the writing and the reading of it is 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 something that that we are working on. The, the mere fact that 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 at out of UG translation uh, language department comes these um, COVID-19 messages in these various language audio and written. Those are the signs, those are the concrete examples of working on it and moving forward and, and, and setting examples for others. Someone heard that and they go, well, hey, we can do that. In St. Martin, I know for the, the same COVID messages, they are in about, they are in Haitian, they are in uh, the Creole, they are in, um, I, I, we have access to them in Papamento and they're certainly in French and in Dutch throughout. The, and you have to look at the island as one organism because in, 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 the, in the north of, of the island, they may do it primarily in French in the south of the island is primarily in English in this case. But when you look at the whole island, you have access to this wide information that services and that serves the, the entire population. If I, may, if I may mention something relative to population and numbers and, 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 and the concreteness of, of, of this business of publishing and language and, and our peoples. Our, the Caribbean region, and I'm just talking the, the, the three, the, the Suriname, Guyana, Cayenne, and we're just skirting the Caribbean coast of Central America and the islands, the archipelago. And you're talking relative to publishing and, and, and reading and writing. You're talking about a population of at least 30 million people. Mm -hmm. I know of no Caribbean author who have yet sold 1 million books in the Caribbean. You see, but we, but just by throwing that out starts to set up, you know, ideas and approaches and, 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 and the need to involve 
booksellers and, and book distributors and libraries and universities mm. and, and, and the writer having that idea that can be done and translators and, and, and people who are, one of the reasons the, the House of the Hesse appears to, 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 to be comfortable with languages and it's pumping out the, the various language uh, volumes is because in St. Martin, um, traditionally, we're talking about the late 1800s, the, the traditional core of the St. Martin people are multilingual. I think the fancy word now is plurilingual. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a linguist, right? And so, so there's a certain ease, there's a certain fluency. It's not always, it's not always fluent, but it's a fluidity in relation to language. Like, oh, we can do that. I can do that. Or oh, what's that word in that language again? You know, St. Martin's are curious about language. And so what's that word? What did you just say? You know, and so our aptitude for language is part of why possibly that House of Nehesi appears to be so um, comfortable with, with translations. But Casa de las Americas have been engaged in translations as well. Maybe not as many in one volume, but they've been engaging it. And, and relative to how politics affects our region, the sister mentioned um, Guyana being affected by American imperialism and before by, by uh, British imperialism. Um, part of the, the, the politics that has kept Cuba from being more involved and open and accessible to, to our region has to do with, with, with American imperialism. So, so, and that goes then right back to Casa las Americas being able, uh, not being able to distribute more and more easily to more audiences, more of its translated volumes. And a, lot, a number of those translated volumes are from writers from other parts of the Caribbean. You see, so this is this all of this is part of what we are, we are, we are part of here. We, 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 it's hard for us to only speak of one area and not see its connectedness or its engagement to the other towards um, towards this on this liberation journey that 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 we've been that we've been on. Give thanks. I just would like to share the screen for a moment to offer up something that would give some degree of context to what we've already been discussing. And I want to extend my thanks to King Brother Lasana for just giving us permission to share this short piece on Title Deeds poem. Title Deed. History is always just ensuing. It is our eternal story. Renew each time we are so forward as we gaze upon the face of freedom and summon her like proud rooster flock. Spur off the locks barring the sight from night, from oozing out the maroon spill light of dawn. Ball out songs of good morning, good morning, I come from a country, reaping a day in which nothing compares to freedom, which so many of us have forgotten to claim as a matter of right to fight for, and if needs be to erect debt as a monarch to be slain at the altar of guillotine, to born the day of democracy in the nation birth of republic, and no longer swear that there is no greater reward than the heaven which awaits those we willen, Holland, Holden, we who be more French than the French, Leuster Alamo. Listen, everyone. Escuchan pueblo, ecute tout le monde. Soft as the whisper may be, your period is calling you like a girl come of age. Wow, 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 wow. wow. <laughs> oh my God, that is fantastic. Oh. No, 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 no. Um, send it doctor, please, please, please. Say it again. <laughs> I have been summoned and I shall follow instruction because some persons may not to catch it and we need to make sure they catch it. They, they need for catch it. I'm gonna say it again, you need for catch it. Oh, but it's the wrong one. I think, no, I have it right, I have it right. Nope, movement. I got too excited. I got too excited. Let me Ms. go back. Symphony, to we, I, I was not ready for that. I was not ready for that. Okay. Get prepared. The Get world prepared. Prepared. needs, listen, that needs to be played on all of the channels everywhere. 
flexing, Brother King? Is that what you're doing? Is that, is that how you're flexing, though? Really? That, that's, that's, <laughs> part, that's part of my work. And that, that's also a, a way, again, of reaching um, folks. Because indeed, the sister said that writing is a community activity. You're writing for, is, um, from, from a community and powerful. for a community. And so taking it from the book, um, that's from the book, The Salt Reaper. And we had, uh, during the, uh, a fellow that was received at the Hong Kong Baptist University in China, we were able to do the audio recording. So there's a CD of that book as well. This poem is- What, I, what I meant when I said, is that how you're, how you're flexing? I, I did not mean, oh, so you're writing like that. I meant, I meant- It's you, okay. We understand you. Because that's a rough one to even respond to. So we're gonna, as requested, so viewers and listeners that did not catch it before, we'll and come again. Give thanks. <laughs> Your sound is off. Renewed each time we are so okay. forward. It's gonna make me take it back, I know. <laughs> back to you. Title deed. History is always just ensuing, it is our eternal story. Renewed each time we are so forward as we gaze upon the face of freedom and summon her like proud rooster flock. Spur off the locks barring the sight from night, from oozing out the maroon spill light of dawn. Ball out songs of good morning, good morning, I come from a country, reaping a day in which nothing compares to freedom which so many of us have forgotten to claim as a matter of right to fight for and if needs be to erect debt as a monarch to be slain at the altar of guillotine to born the day of democracy in the nation birth of republic and no longer swear that there is no greater reward than the heaven which awaits those we willen Holland Howden we who be more French than the French Lauster Alamar listen everybody Escuch un pueblo, écoute tout le monde. Soft as the whisper may be, your period is calling you like a girl come of age. I give thanks for being able to share that with full permissions of our illustrious king brother, Osana and Seku. I don't know if I, I don't know if I should be crying or laughing or rejoicing or all of those things at the same um, time. That, um, is, that is so potent. That is so to my core. That is so has to be shared by educators I know that will be taking that out to populations of young people. That is powerful. I am giving thanks. I am humbled. Um, and as an old school marm, I would say that should be on the CXC syllabus. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, the, for those comments. It's really it's encouraging for us to keep pushing. And you notice we spoke of, of, of reading and, and, and writing and that, that, that um, video tried to include work collaborating with, 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 with young um, graphic designers and, 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 and video Smiths, if you will, Angelo uh, Rumbly, another brother Kevin. Please drop the word um, try. Well, I try. Well, it's a we working yeah. by working. We did well, it. it's, it's a doing. We yes, by working together, we collaborating, <laughs> we would have put put a, a, a piece like that together that included these various forms of um, of communication. Wow. The so reading is there. You read, you know, especially the way the the words were formatted. A young person would be curious. You know, wow, what's that Instagram. word? Oh, yeah. right. Instagram. Exactly. It's, Facebook, that kind of, it's based on those. Right. Make it's based them, on those. Make them curious. Of indeed. 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 There you go. Wow. There you go. Wow, good time. Ah! Ah! Yes. Okay. I found, I found my voice. <laughs> wow. Okay. Give thanks. Thank you. Yes, Senate Doctor. Yes. 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 I know that this was, this is why this particular gathering is very very telling. The intention has been to know a lot of persons may not be fully aware of what House of the Hesse Publishers does, mm. right in the region, much less around the globe. And they're touching the entire earth, inclusive of the one third 
of the entire earth owned by the queen. They're a touch the queen. Wow. I just want to say that so the that queen. I can help myself. Me. Who? There the, queen. the other one that owns a third of the real estate on the planet. We need that because name. Because the no. should never be before the name. The, it's not agreed. the. Agreed, 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 correction. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's one third of the real estate. Of <laughs> also a place I love you. Works are shared. Correction noted. Correction noted. Give thanks. Give thanks. I, you know, I, I should I should note as well, and and the, the encouragement and the, the words of encouragement are, are, are good. Um, you know, House of Nehesi as an indie press or indie, independent press is, is a small press. You know, and 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 we, we are thankful when we hear folks. Uh, I, I'm speaking as sister, uh, one of the professors at the uh, Saint Augustine campus, uh, or the teacher college. You say, you know, they um we they are they are four uh, major publishers in the Caribbean, and so I'm like, oh yeah, okay. He said, Casa, I said, yeah, mm -hmm. UE, so yeah, and then she mentioned uh, a third. I said, oh, okay, and then she said, House of Nehesi, and so you know that type of encouragement. It's, it's good. It encourages us to keep going forward. But, but we are a small press. And, and as such, I think one of the things we want folks to know, it goes back to one of the, the authors I, I love to quote or uh, make reference to is George Lanning. And the idea is that you use the resources you have, uh, you know, because sometimes that is all you have. You use those resources then to keep pressing on, to keep pressing on. There are going to be periods when you're going to be able to link up with, with, with smaller or medium size or greater agencies, both personal and corporate and, 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 and so forth, that you can go a bit further and that they too can go a bit further. And so this is why I keep using the term this liberation journey that we've been on. For example, at the last Carrie Festa, um, we were unable to be there. Our representative House of Nehesi Publish were unable to be there at the same time that one of our books were the two or three books that were launched at the, at the symposium at the in Barbados. And so we are not there. There's one or two St. Martin authors there. And I said, well, you know, I can contact them, you know, but um, we need somebody who could represent us to do the full presentation coming from an agency that is involved with publishing, with, involved with media and so forth. And we come to find out that Dr. Chenzida Kahina was there. And so we wrote her, I said, would you represent, would you be the, the representative for House of Nancy Publishers at the launch of Leviticus by Kamal Brackwick in his, in his home country, um, a House of Nancy Publishers book at such a regional, uh, major regional uh, platform, festival, CARICOM. And uh, because of our relationship and our work and our networking and our friendship and professional networking, uh, Dr. Kahina said, sure, yes. And so while she was able to do that, one of our artists, the dancer, Clara Reyes, who also have a, a regional and international kind of network and a connection going on, was able to recite from, the, from Kamau's book because he wasn't able to make it. So Beverly, his wife was there representing him. And so we had this network of people and then we were not missed because we were there. So House of Nehesi and represented it was a 10%. phenomenal. It was a phenomenal event. In, indeed. It you was know, a phenomenal event. A, exactly. And here's, this is a regional event with, 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 with kind of a global attention because, as you know, Carafesta now has, has widened, again, to Lanning's notion of what we call the external frontiers of the Caribbean. So, for example, you have, you have uh, not just the folks from the Caribbean who have ventured or visited or gone back to certain countries, but you have countries like India, and, and, and China and Canada and some of the European countries asking if they could send delegations to Carafesta. That's the extent to which Carafesta has grown. And it has not grown without challenges, you know? And so it's a reach. And, this, and each time this, 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 this platform is set up and the reaching takes place, more and more people who didn't know before come to know and who knew before are encouraged and are celebrated and, and are known and, and we become more known to each other and more solidary as opposed to more unknown and solitary. I want to use two bad words. Go oh, ahead. Cuss. cuss. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright and trickle down economics. Yeah. yeah. Speak. <laughs> Speak for me. 
<laughs> the, uh, I, I think the, the copyright is, is, is a ticklish thing. I think it's important because artist work is work and it, they should have, they are, there must be degrees of protection and, 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 and compensation. And if an artist, if that's their work, then they, they need to be able to, 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 to benefit from it in such a way that it becomes part of their liberty of a living, you know? Um, so, and then, the, but the, 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 here's where you need the workshops and, and the schoolings and so on, because the, the musician, especially our musicians in the Caribbean, the, the artists, the painters and the writers, they need to know then when I had this copyright, how, when is it and how is it mine as opposed to let us say a producer might tell you oh you know that's a great song but da, 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 da. by the time you finish the contract the song is not yours anymore and it's played throughout and you you're not benefiting from it so so there there's need for continual um, uh, workshops and and information and, and and policies within the respective territories and countries in our region to uh, protect the, the, the work of, of our artists. I think the Eastern Caribbean have, a, a, or they are working on um, our brother in, 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 at UVI, uh, um, Dr. Simon Chenzira, who's been working on the, the copyright um, 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 regimes in copyright laws and copyright um, positions relative to the Eastern Caribbean. Some of the countries um, like Barbados, um, and Jamaica have been making strides in, 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 in copyright legislation or, or copyright policy or copyright approaches compared to say the 60s when their artists were completely vulnerable. You know, Cuba that had the open policy um, because of, of, of the blockade and because of this revolution was, was open to just, you know, uh, being able to, to, to translate work and to take work is also now concerned with, with, with copyrights at home relative to its work that's going beyond beyond Cuba. So there is this discussion and conversation. It's important to be to, to take place and it's important that the writers, the artists, the painters become so aware of it and not to be intimidated by it, that they are part of the conversation, they are part of the push, they are part of the lobbying effort of what become becomes that. Uh, the trickle down um, uh, economics relative to, to copyright and so on is, is, you know, it's kind of a Reaganite joke, you know, because I, I, I don't believe that these trickle down things work. You know, a man works, a woman works, you pay them for their work, you know, and, and, and relative to developing our economies, we cannot wait for, for, for favors and for crumbs from the wealthier countries. Um, we cannot wait, for example, for, for, for um, cruise line agencies in, 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 in Florida, for example, that behave as if they're a country dictating, you know, where, um, where a boat is going to land and what is going to be the cruise protocol and so on, and Caribbean countries accepting it, um, um, you know, passively without um, protecting their property and their people and, and their, their, their sovereignty, to use a word, you know, all that is, is, is involved. So again, when we talk of copyrights, we talk of trickle down, we talk about our economy and we link it to the arts and culture, we link it to, 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 to technologies, to science, it's integrated. And it's not, it's not um, and yes, we need our experts in each, in all of these areas to keep bringing it forward. And we need, we need to have uh, political leadership that is not intimidated by, by our experts who are um, pro-Caribbean or pan-Caribbeanist or pan-Africanist that inform it critically because the rise of mercantilist Europe was a European enterprise, you know. So, so and, 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 and it was informed by such, by the church, by, by the guilds, by the, 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 the towns that grew rich on slavery and so on. So why wouldn't our enterprises, our cultural arts, our legacies, our nation buildings, why wouldn't they, why shouldn't they be informed by Caribbean realities, critically so, by uh, Pan-Africanist based realities, critically so, because what is considered Western or European is informed by by their realities. Yes, you know, I'm yes. tempted to say that they have a right as their business, but indeed, um, it, it just can't leave it like that because part of those that are, are benefit, that are suffering from it uh, are significantly um, our people. Yes, and that has to be combated. Yes, yes, yes. and it's it's a way overdue. Indeed, way overdue. Way, way, over, way, way overdue. overdue. And here's where I think the, the, the UG and UV and so on have made, you know, sometimes we look at our, even the, 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 the historically black colleges in the US, sometimes we look at, at our institutions and maybe less so now 
But since the 60s, certainly in, in, in UE and UG, you know, there have been significant strides made to, to, um, to what is ours, what is the claim, what is the Caribbean, um, how do we continue to, 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 to build it? You know, and again, it's not without odds. It's not without interruptions. It's not without the, 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 the sabotage and undermining of a revolution like the Grenada Revolution or, or trying to, 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 to undermine the Cuban um, um, victories or to stunt the Haitian Revolution. It's not within those. In fact, there's a term you know, that, that has popped in my mind over the last few, 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 few months. And indeed, here's where you wish you had time you know, to write, right? Um, that Europe and the US have been at war with the Caribbean for over 400 years. How else, how else would you term and look at the undermining of progressive governments who are elected by their people, the assassination of political leaders, the, the undermining, constant and open undermining of, 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 um, of, of enterprise, of, 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 of entrepreneurial engagements, of ownership of our very own lands, of, of the undermining of independence movements. How else would you describe that? The invasion of our countries my, and my, territory. My, it's, my they very, have been at war with us. My, various, my very esteemed brother King, this is not new news. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. and all the, more reason, all the more reason to throw it out. You know, I think, my, mm -hmm. go ahead. For many Sorry. years, I think for many years, we have been engaged in politeness. We have been we have been engaged in something called forgiveness. We have been engaged in something that has us in a stupor. Um, the evidence is there to show that uh, we are not liked. We may say, but why 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 would you say that? Of course, they they, they smile with us. They visit us. Tourism exists. No, let us look behind those um those veneers let us look be beyond that and speak to the thing that you have just referred to and recognize that we have been harmed for many 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 years and uh we are very forgiving as a people we want everything to be wonderful so when people are exploiting us and they're smiling and at, at us we smile back because we're very and, and we, we because you know we part of it is we have manners you know and and that that was an an interesting I, I, the, word. The manners that we have wasn't necessarily in certain civilities that we have when you look at, at, at greetings and so on, like the classic greetings that you open with. A lot of those civilities and manners and greetings and, and the communal way of discussing and dialogue that allows sometimes even for the opposition to feel, wait a minute, did I just win that or not? But you this know? is the confusion. Well, that came with us too. But this you know, is what we, we have to remember those But this is what well. language does. Indeed, language indeed. seduces you. Indeed. Language, especially <laughs> if you're introduced to it with the parameters that we have been given. There you go. There are people who watch yeah. us write, and by looking at what we have written and how we write, they can analyze That's where right. we are socioeconomically, where we are psych Indeed. psychologically, Indeed. where we are Indeed. spiritually. They, 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 just by looking at how we write and what we wrote. Yeah, yeah. They and we need to do that as well. And we need to do that as well. La but yeah. language yeah. seduces us. Yeah, and so indeed. even use of the word manners, we have manners. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, sometimes we have to be polite and invite people to leave our house. Yeah, but that's still manners. And that's still manners. The way you ex leave excuse them. The house. <laughs> exactly. The way you excuse them. You know, like it's time, you know, like, and if they me, won't no. go, <laughs> yes, you take it from being intellectual and take it into activism, and then it becomes physical yeah, and spiritual yes. and emotional, and, and, and everything course. get them out it, because indeed. they are and, harming and, and, us. Well, no, it doesn't, it doesn't take away from that as well. And you know, they are harming uh, because us. While, while we have manners, you know, we also have um, um, effective warfare that we have engaged, otherwise, we wouldn't be here. You know, we spoke of the Maroons briefly uh, before. Well, yeah, well, those, a lot of those, those um, warrior engagements, just like the manners engagements, also came over with us. Yes, but met, you know? and you are so, right, so, you are quite right. So we can right. engage more, we can engage You are manners, right, you are and we right. Know, we, know, we have a way of saying um, in St. Martin, because it's a kind of a, you know, the, this notion of the friendly island, which has become commercialized, but part of it really is because there's a kind of a hospitality culture, and I'm not the archetypical, person of it, but they really have it here in St. Martin. Brother and they King, do this. 
so they said, Martin, I will do this. You know, they would be like, um, you know, the conversation is going on and that, that, back and forth. And then, and then they just stopped talking. The person just, it, it's, it's done. It's finished. You know, it's time to leave. It, they, they, the conversation is not going Brother on. King. You know, it's like I vex, and from now on, it's going to be an action. So we have that as well. Brother we, King, yes. mm -hmm. let me say to you, that which is happening in St. Martin is happening in many other spaces. Indeed. And I, Indeed. I, I really, you know, the, 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 the words of, of, of Queen Mother, uh, Comrade uh, Charlene, it's ringing in my in my head. There is a there is a thing about the politeness, you know. I, I you know I want to be I want to be polite. I don't or I don't want any unpleasant. I think sometimes we just have to confront this thing and say, you know, the language has seduced us, and so has the notion of having made it. Those of us who are have become professionals and work in certain institutions, but we're not prepared to commit what is called suicide whether it be career suicide or social suicide or whatever what we do is we collude with an idea that is harming us as a people you know indeed, indeed. we have been harmed and it needs to be outed we need to be saying we can say so politely we don't have to be we don't have to raise our voices we can say we see what you have done here is the evidence it has got to stop you are you clearly no i am being very polite i have not scanners <laughs> You clearly don't like me because if you did, you wouldn't do this. You must now leave. <laughs> I, I wasn't talking about the manners of the colluders, but I, I see I, I'm, I, I'm with you on this. Is, I, I understand. Yeah. I salute you both. But you understand <laughs> about the teaching of language. I mean, if our teachers, I'm coming back to the children that we, I mean, before COVID, you put on their uniforms and you send them off to these schools and the chairs are lined up like soldiers and some of them are even nailed to the ground, the chairs and tables. Um, and you teach our teachers how to teach English, but you don't tell them the historical context yeah. of that, the origin of that language in their mouths. And then the whole notion of politeness becomes problematic. Why, what am I, who am I writing for? I mean, mm -hmm. nowadays we're teaching children to write words in English so they can get a job in somebody's office or mm -hmm. somebody's business. Yeah. Not to write, to own the thing, yeah. but to work for a boss. I mean. It's, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing struggle and it's part of it. And I, I'm gonna switch it now just from the student. Let us switch it up to the writers. There's a number of our writers now right here in this Caribbean. Um, and, and certainly in, in, in the US and New York, who are writing to win awards. Yeah, yeah. You see? So there again, we, it's a similar, it's a similar uh, thing. And so is that person writing to community? Are they writing authentically from the community? Are they, you know, are they writing so that the, 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 the language, the narrative, the dialogue could fit up the possible movie that can be made from the novel, you know, for example, and then it will, it will be in sync with, with, with Hollywood that despises the Black and the African realities and symbols and so forth. You know, so all, that is so it's an ongoing and this type of discussion, the expose, the, 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 the writings that come out of it, that explains it, that break it down continually. We're not in a vacuum. Um, it's so essential um, to be ongoing and to, and, and to nip it in the bud, because you may have a high schooler now who says, oh, I'm going to write to win an award. And then maybe they heard Dr. Chen Zira makes a comment relative to this. Say, oh, so no, then I should just write for my community. I should just write for my people. I should just write. I shouldn't self-censor myself, you know. So, but if that student, if that child didn't hear this conversation that we're having now, if it wasn't pointed out, they would think it as a norm. Oh, yeah, I should write to win an award. I should write because this book might eventually become a movie, as opposed to telling um, uh, an authentic and an exciting, uh, um, for a better word, a true story of, of, of my people, of my community, of my family even. Yeah, yeah. I guess the question is who is giving the award? Indeed, yes. And, and, and that thing. conditions it as well, yes. So who's giving the award certainly conditions what you're going to write, how you're going to write it, 
What are going to be the symbols in there? And 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 nine out of ten times, those symbols are going to be the ones that 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 con that coincide and that show up um, the, the 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 system as is. Whether it's Western imperialism, whether it's, uh, it's capitalism um, in it, in its madness, whether you know all of those systems, that that writing um, becomes part of its literature, as opposed to the literature from where it came. You know, from where the story came from. You see, so those are those are challenges we have. So while we earlier we talk of the book and having a publisher in our region, or our, our people being in the region, and now they don't have to go in exile to write. There's also these other aspects of the story. You know, there's also the writing in the Caribbean now, where we are seeing some of the Caribbean literature, which is very young, but it's really for its youth is is a real world class literature. <laughs> you know, and I'm not just saying that as a Caribbean person, but here you have a situation where. You have some of the the places now, some of the countries where the the, the the so and when a Caribbean writer is critiqued or evaluated, it tends to go across the region, not always in, but increasingly more so across the language zones as well. So when you write a novel, you're going to be com compared to Chamuse, or you write a collection of poems, and you're from Grenada, you might be compared to Guillen, or you might write a, a, a you know a piece on, on language, and you're in Jamaica, but you know Frank Arion's assessment of Creole development might come in. But we have a situation now where some of the writers, they are locking their, 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 their writing only within, not sometimes not just the island, but within the city or the capital of their island. And then don't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. If you tell me anything else, then you're a player hater. You know, which, which, by the way, is part of the milieu of some of our arts, especially the music um, people, the rappers and so on. You know, um, here, here's, my, here's my CD, you know. Um, tell me how you like it. You have to like it. If you don't like it, then you're a player hater. So there's no critique. Critique is a, is a most important um, um, part of, of, of assessing a work in its relationship to its people. And it's not necessarily Western, you know, it, it, it's, it's critique, you know. And so if, 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 the, if, the, if, you, if the writer now is becoming um, timid, <laughs> like I'm trying to be kind, um, to be critiqued in relation to writers outside of their country or territory, then it's, it's, it, to me, it's diminishing um, their work, They're diminishing the potency of their work within their own, their own community. So we have to be mindful of this thing called Caribbean literature. Within this thing called Caribbean literature are many literatures, but the, 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 the critique and the evaluation that, 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 that enters into each, each literature from the wide thing we call Caribbean literature that is re very relatively successful compared, given its, its youth. Um, we don't want to lose that. And I'm mindful of that these last few years. I'm seeing it cropping up here and there. And I'm very mindful and concerned about it. That, that then, oh, oh, I'm from Barbados, so you can't critique me as such. Oh, I'm from Anguilla, so you can't critique me in relation to Virgin Islands. Or oh, I'm from Cuba, you can't critique me in relation to Haiti. No, we don't want that. We want a Caribbean writer to be critiqued, to be analyzed in relation to this, to this Caribbean civilization that is emerging out of both the, co the, co the collective communal and the uniqueness of each territory and the collective realities of the entire region. This to me becomes then a powerful literature. Mm -hmm. Federation right there. Yeah, and Federation it doesn't take right there, so. Indeed, and it doesn't take away from the from the uniqueness or the power of your literature, yeah. whether you're from Trinidad or from Antigua or from Sabre. It doesn't, you know. But it, it, if anything, it strengthens it and it fortifies it, and yes. in turn, it fortifies yeah. the and strengthens. Maybe fortifies not the right word. You want to maybe dynamic or it makes exciting our entire region. Lemming has a, a a term he said to me once when I was at in Bridgetown. He said, um, he said, you know, I consider myself a Caribbean man because being a Caribbean man makes me more of a Barbadian than being a Barbadian makes me more Caribbean. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, you know, Lamy, oh you know, my God. Lamy, George oh Lamy. yeah, yeah, you can rely on him. <laughs> exactly, you can, you can rely, rely yes, you can rely on him. Uh, for, the sweet, for the seduction of language, Dr. Sandra. <laughs> I just, no, no, let me, can, I just, can I just, before we end, I must say, I am uh, sister, <laughs> I am sister first. I am sister okay. doctor. The sister was here before ah, the doctor. True, so I true. hold on to the sister like, you know, that's I it, that it. is how I got my name. Be I love because it. Because I think sometimes we, we do that disconnect and then then where are we? We are we, we are professionals floating around someplace. I, I am I am that. a I am an African <laughs> living in this context. 
I am um, the seduction of the of the language and the richness of our conversation here is captivating. Well, I know at some point um, my illustrious co-host, Senate Dr. Chenzira, African Queen Mother, warrior of merit will bring my attention to the time. And I'm just wondering whether Queen Mother, Comrade Charlene, whether you have a piece that you would want to share with us before we go, because uh, my art requires balance. I can't think of anything right now, no, especially not in my head, no, no. And we appreciate, if I may add, that you have in your teaching capacity, and usually I pull up person's YouTube pages and I say, I try to give them a heads up. I think it's really important and critical for persons to be aware of that Sister Queen, Mother Comrade Charlene is speaking from that space of actually teaching in the community, in the academy, in various circles across the region over a course of time. And is, this is not her first journey. So she's always engaged in those areas of restoring a, I'm gonna use this term really strongly, a revolutionary flavor to how we narrate language so that persons feel the inclusivity so that every child feels empowered so that they know the beauty and the greatness in themselves. And I'm just saying that from what I have observed, what I have read, what has been shared with me mm -hmm. from sisters and brothers inside of Guyana, as well as some of her other works elsewhere. And I'm looking forward to us having another conversation in action and being able to share that in the future. The part that I also would be remiss in not offering is that this is just a, like I said from the beginning, this is just a thread in what we know could have easily been an entire semester or years of engagement and instruction and development and sharing. This is just getting our viewers, our listeners to know that sometimes we think certain things are not happening because it's not which part we did. It's happening. And it's just a matter of time before we start to realign ourselves and restore that proactive solidarity amongst ourselves and having those conversations within ourselves because the work is happening. And this also restores strength because sometimes many of us feel that we are in our respective spaces and places in solitude. And it may appear so, when we have these types of conversations, we know that that is shifted. And I, it makes me bring to mind the work of Dr. Fukiao Kim Buandende out of Uganda, who for a number of reasons had to leave his very humble abode inside of Uganda to come to, into the US and other parts of the world to actually share an entirely new framework expanding Ubuntuism, expanding the thought process of how we engage or critique one another internally so that it's a critique that is constructive, not just we're gonna break it down and tear it apart, but that we're adding and giving credence to the value, looking at it from a place of enunciation, from a place of preparation, from a place of opening, from a place of implementation and a place of closure. So that when we're looking at publications, works, spoken word, literary engagements, educational techniques and strategies, we're utilizing that ancestral, ancient, African, indigenous cosmological space that has doesn't require that we explain all of that, that we just know that this is something that's done. That's what elders do. That's what our ancestors gave us guidance on. That's why the standards of excellence have always been extremely high. And that's why beyond what we think in the Eurocentric context, we take it to a level in a space hmm, that is authentically, authentically about truth, 
justice, order, reciprocity, balance, divine righteousness, and harmony. All of that to say ma'at, you know, when we're doing this type of work. So I'm very grateful to have mm -hmm. Sister Queen, Mother, Comrade Charlene Wilkinson share with us. I hope this has been as engaging for her as it has been for us. I'm very grateful for yeah. King Brother Lasana M. Sekou for sharing what I knew you would share. And I asked most humbly, we, can, we were, we were going to close with, a, I wanted to share another piece of his work, if I may. Is that agreeable yeah. to you, Sister Certainly, Dr. certainly, <laughs> of course. I'm just saying, that's okay. That's okay. Now, my illustrious co-host, Senate Doctor, African Queen Mother Warrior, Senate Doctor, you laugh at me. That's what you do, you laugh at me. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't get a chance all the time to uh, have this, this type of work shared with us. And I'm making sure, right, sound. And let's open. Casualties. In war, truth is a new sleep. Embedded with conquering armies. Early rise, dinner time, time to bed, breaking stories of the empire. In war, torture is a naked heap. Pyramids of Abner Luimas incarcerated a new in a carcel. Abu Ghraib, Mazare Sharif. Get more this and that. In war, revenge is a slit warm feed of wet spectre, a boil of poor people's children. The Duke's war, or another sad damn war. Our daughter jerks our son on a leash for all to see. Our son's head rolls on line, a muddy river, wet in our lap. In war, love is still well. Tattered, battered, shattered awake. Justice never tires. The knob need hunched back. Googly eyed ascent to grace. Peace is a brew, a bitter's cup to take. In war, we are in each other's most terrible keep. You are a poet, my brother. You are a poet. I feel you. Thank you. Thank you. And that is where I sense Sister Dr. Sandra, illustrious, regal, African Queen Mother Warrior. I am very grateful for having the opportunity to co host with you. Brother King Lasana. Yes, 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 yes. Sister Queen Charlene, comrade, Queen Mother. Hey, woo! No less. No less. <laughs> no less. We're very grateful. You all have taken this versation around language and literacy and publication and literature and life, all the L's to another level. And we're very grateful. And to our viewers and our listeners, we hope that you've been able to enjoy and embrace this slice shared through Building Legacy. We hope to have you join us again, second and fourth Saturdays from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. GMT2. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we have sisters and brothers that are sharing commentary as far as South Africa in our links, brothers and sisters that are sharing from Barbados in our links, as long as well as Jamaica, 
Canada. We have a sister tuning in from Toronto. Let me get it. Yeah, Nova Scotia. There we go. And other parts of the world. And we're hoping to be able to expand that. So remember that culture, heals humanity, land is our foundation. Spiritual harmony unifies us. Building legacy is which part we do. And we give thanks. And we give thanks. And we give thanks. Give thanks. Thanks. <laughs> it's good meeting you, you, Sister Professor Charlene.